scary. No, no, I'm not scary at all. Only to my I'm children. Um, so, in that last scene, where you were writing in your blood, how did you feel? I, I've been wondering that since I watched that scene. It was horrible. It was a really um, poignant day, and it was funny. Table read of the script all the way through rehearsals and could work out or were told who killed Kaz. Like nobody knew. Oh, wow. And we had this box, I created this box in the green room, the who killed Kaz box. <laughs> <laughs> and you had to put in some money and a form with who you thought killed Kaz. And not even I knew. And I was like, hang on, how's that gonna happen? And why am I writing M? So it's Mari. <laughs> Or it's a man, or it's Mario or a man, so what? <laughs> or was Mari a man at some point? No, just <laughs> <laughs> So it was really funny, and on the day that they did it, I couldn't even see who it was that was behind me. Oh, you literally, there was no way to your character. Like, it was a stunt person, but the director's like, I don't want you to even look and talk and say, hey, morning, how you going? <laughs> don't even. Just walk the thing and know that. And in the rehearsals, I'd walk the thing, they'd put the mark there, they'd say, stop there, you'll get the thing. It'll slash, and then we'll cut, and then we'll go into, you know, we'll do all the blood stuff that we had to do. And then we'll go into it, because I had this whole neck piece that had to be sliced, and had to be put on, so we had to cut them. So I didn't even know, and I just felt this hand. And I was like, it doesn't feel like Susie Porter, and Susie's really <laughs> short. <laughs> She's so short. And you know what she would have done too? She would have giggled. <laughs> she would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it wasn't Susie. I'm like, wow. So we get through the scene and the blood and the, and the losing the blood, the unconsciousness, and just laying there was like, this is, this is my final moment on this beautiful big family show that I've invested so much into. I don't know why I'm teary with you people. <laughs> man up, Macintosh. <laughs> Come on, man. And so it was really bittersweet. And the crew was amazing. They were just silent throughout the whole thing. Normally it's really noisy and people are cracking jokes and eating snacks. And, but that day on set, it was just silent. And everyone was there around me, just energetically giving me that space, which was so graceful and so incredible. The most amazing crew and the most amazing cast. So to lay there for that little final moment, I was really tired from all that acting, so I was like, at least I'll get to lay here for the next eight hours on a cold <laughs> But, you know, it was also time, I think, for Cass. I think you notice throughout the beginnings of the series, one to three to four to five to six, you get your top dogs. And when you're the top dog, the only way from there is down because everyone else is trying to climb up the ladder and the shit up. I thought you were going to say shim. You said Sheila? I think that kind of goes hand in hand though with what well, we're in the ladder trying to pull you you're down. You're trying to climb up a Sheila? That's about yeah. right. Yeah. 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 And so you only really get you know, three, four seasons at most until you start kind of running around the same circles and, and telling the same story. So it, it's time. And Wentworth was such a cutting edge show they weren't afraid to, you know, kill you off. I remember the day we had the read through. We had, no, we had a series arc overview of season seven. And I was the only person who knew that Kaz was going to die and had phone calls with the producers and all that stuff. And we went into the big table read that was the overview. So, and we had the head writer and the producer and the director and everyone sitting at this really long table. So in F1, this happens and then that happens and da da da. And then, you know, reader does this and all this stuff and da da get to F3 and go, and suddenly Kaz get her, her throat gets slit and they just kept reading. And then everyone went, oh! <laughs> And they all turned to me and I just went, and they still couldn't shut their mouths and all breathe. And it was just beautiful. There's such a fucking great crew, this crew. And this family is amazing. The whole thing is just magic. It's so a great episode. And they're like, you're good. I'm like, yeah, man, that's amazing. <laughs>
No, it's going to be great. Great idea. Who wrote it? <laughs> my back pocket. Anyway, so then I sickened it a bit. And at the time, I have a 13 year old son. <laughs> and I'm not getting any more comfortable with it. So I call my agent one night from a little house I've got in Port Melbourne. And I call her and go, I, I can't. I can't do that. Like, it's my first episode and I'm going to be that actor who can't do it. And it's amazing. Like, it's really out there and, you know, cutting the edge. And it would be great, but I cannot let my 13-year-old son and all his friends Google and YouTube and resend this shit out for the rest of my life. I can't. And I don't want to lose my job. Like, it was serious. You think about it. I want you to come to the next convention naked, all of you. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to cancel them. What would you say? No, no, no. <laughs> I'll do it. All right, well, then we're going to cancel the conventions. This is the last one. It's all over. So that were the they, they were the stakes. And so I'm on the phone to my agent. She's like, look, you know, just think about it a bit more. You can get a little patch. You can get a little G-string thing. A couple of bits of tapes on your girls. And I'm like, hmm. I'll think about it some more, think about it some more. I slept on it and then I woke up the next day and I went, I got an idea, but I can't tell anyone but the powers that be, this is what I'm gonna do. I knew nobody, I knew Dan, I knew Nicole, Celia, but I didn't know any of the um, extras who are extraordinary. So I went around the next day at work and I made sure I met every extra, Loved the da da, talked about the thing, went, are you in the thingy scene? Are you in the thingy scene? How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? Do you want to do it? Yeah, I'm fucking great with it. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about you? How do you feel? I don't really want to do it because I've got a huge scar from when my husband stabbed me. <laughs> True story. Because a lot of our extras have been in the system, or they've lived hard lives. They're not just from an agency of anyone's. They're like, these girls know a thing or two about a hard life. So I worked through my crew and I went, okay, I've got probably about 70% who would rather not, but 30% who cannot wait to show you this. <laughs> <laughs> so then I went on a campaign of going, you don't have to. I haven't even talked to the producers or anybody else. I just thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Kaz. Yeah. 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 You don't have to show your bits if you don't want to, because I'm not going to. And because I involved them and together we shared our concerns about it, together we kind of went, we'll do the naked protest our way. We won't do it any other way. And if anyone says anything, we'll send them to you, Tammy. <laughs> yes. But together, we worked out a way to do it. And if you go back and look at that naked protest scene, you'll see some chicks are loving it. And most of us, including me, kept the singlet on, did the whatever, a long way from being nude and doing all that stuff and then having the guards come out and lift you up while you're nude. <laughs> so for me, that was my favorite because of the way we all worked together to make it work for us and so we felt safe and protected. But, and also that, you know, we did it the way we wanted to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.